I'm still planning on making the video game review of Dread Delusion, but I've put 20 hours into the game since the 1.0 and I'm still not halfway through, and I just don't have the time to put more into it like I want to. Plus, this would be a completely new experience for me making a video game review, and I'm not sure how I'll do it. So when I'm able to finish the game, hopefully soon, I will make the review ASAP. But first, your likes! Please give, and maybe subscribe. So in the last video, I made a huge hullabaloo about how limited the shoulder joint on that thing is, and just how much it ruins the figure to me. Then I uploaded it like two hours before it had to go live, and I turned back to my shelf of new stuff to pick out my next review. I wanted to do something more positive than the last video, so I grabbed the Bumblebee Movie Sunstreaker because I've been enjoying this thing. And I thought to myself, <laughs> yeah, watch, this will have the same shoulders I just railed against. So I grabbed the next figure on the shelf. Then I grabbed another. And another. And then I grabbed some Titans Returns figures. This has been a problem with Hot Rod shoulders that I just never noticed until now. Apparently, I suck as a reviewer. Why do you all watch me? In my defense, Chase's shoulders are uniquely limited. These feel suffocating even when compared to other instances of this same joint. However, I still feel like the biggest idiot on the planet for not noticing this before, or possibly absolutely noticing it and then forgetting. I, however, will take this opportunity to say, Hasbro, stop doing this! Never put the hinge in the shoulder and the swivel in the bicep! Do it the other way around, with the swivel in the shoulder and the hinge in the bicep! There is so much more range the second way! Why would you ever choose to make Hot Rod shoulders if it's not a part of the transformation? And spoiler alert, it's not part of the transformation here! So, why do I like the studio series Bumblebee Sunstreaker so much. Because, let me be honest, to steal a phrase from the Brits out there, it's kind of stodgy, it's kind of ugly, it's kind of kibbly, it's kind of limited, it's kind of really not based on anything except for Hasbro's unwillingness to let the Bumblebee movie line die, and yet, I'm having a great time with this thing. I don't think I can argue that this is an objectively good figure, but I like this one, and I'm at a loss to explain why, because, I mean, Look at it! It is a lumpen, bekibbled thing, the color of cheese in the 70s combined. He seems to have stolen Bumblebee's Tims, and the nicest thing I have to say about it is that it's well proportioned. And I guess they spent a decent amount of money on the paint. Your eyes kind of glaze over it, but they try to put a bunch of accents here at least. However, the wrists look like he glued a couple of camping stoves on them. They have gaps in the backs like a dollar store knockoff that had gold plastic syndrome before they ever shipped it from the warehouse. His calves look like he glued a couple shark fins to the sides, thinking they'd make him like the Hermes of the sea. And his biceps look like a flabby old woman's sagging arm sacks. Dude has the raw sex appeal of one of Godzilla's half Half mile long shits is what I'm saying, and outside of admitting that from the front it looks mostly but not entirely okay, I don't know how to defend this thing. I mean, just look at him. He stands there with the awkwardness of an eight year old who just realized they were on camera while doing the school play, and yet I don't hate it. I mean, Studio Series Dark of the Moon Soundwave just proved to me that I think that the Bayverse designs can actually work if you put them in vibrant colors, so it's entirely possible that I think anything will look good if you just crank the saturation high enough. But at the same time, there's cool mechanical detail here. Despite his sapia toned nature, there's still an interesting bit of color breakup, and a movie bot that looks like a person and not some horrible cryptid is something that I'll always appreciate. Though his head still looks like it's straight out of a horror movie. Oh my god, I hate his face. It looks like his cheeks are covered in horrible sores that makes my skin crawl. And his sunstreak ears, which I'm usually down for, look like the lobes off of a bat, giving him a Halloween vibe. I am not joking when I say this makes me actually uncomfortable. My scalp tingles in disgust, and I desperately want to take a knife to his face to carve off great chunks of this to make the insects marching under my skin go away. I don't have trypophobia, but this dude's face is as gross as a Suriname toad. Do not look up the Suriname Toad. It is vile beyond belief, and you will regret it. Do not go, oh, how bad can it be? You would be happier looking at the blistered face of a human who had acid thrown on them than you would that vile animal. You did not listen to me when I said, do not look up what degloving is, and that toad is probably worse. Okay, so this has likely one of my most hated heads of all time, and a really doofy robot mode. Yet, I still like it. From the front, it's fairly heroic looking, and it's mostly fine. So it's only when you work around to the side that this thing is probably at its worst, and even then, from the back, he's still probably better than his profile. Plus, if you're far enough away, you can't make out the gross out of his face, which does help me appreciate this thing, as long as I don't walk any closer to it. But again, I don't know quite why I like this thing so much. Every aspect of it, I look at and I go, No, that's ugly. No, that, no, that's, that, that's ugly. No, 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 that's ugly. And this isn't particularly helped by the guns, which they just didn't know what to do with. They're okay looking, but not something the character is known for. And while you can peg them together and slap them across his back, they are required to come off for the transformation no matter what. Whether you want them to be on his back in robot mode, boosters for his car mode, or you want them running down the sides, they can never stay on during any of the transformations. There's nowhere that they can go that does not completely interfere with the conversion. But I can at least give it this. I could throw these parts in the trash, and neither mode would look incomplete without them. So this isn't parts forming, it's just weapon storage that can look like an addition to the alt mode that could really have been integrated more elegantly. 
differently. But so far, this is the aspect of this figure that I have the least qualms with. And then you get to the articulation, and this is where the figure probably face planted so hard it caused all those blisters. You can fake the head for a ton of up, there is a slight amount of side to side and a full rotation naturally. Arms pull a significant amount less than a 90, unless you make his pauldrons cover half his face, at which point they still move less than a 90, but at least he's less ugly like this. And while they're nowhere near as restrictive as Chase's version of them, they still do far from everything I want. Slightly more than 90 elbows, but the bicep is limited by the wrist kittle, which is a new one on me. No wrist movement either. Hips are barely limited to the forward and to the side, and not impeded to the back at all. Slightly less than 90 knees, and feet with a toe up and a pivot in both directions. So once again, I'm left wondering why I like this thing so much. The posability is far below the current standard. The problems are mostly located in the arms, but they are pretty extreme there, and the legs don't get off scot-free either because of the knees. It's just not made up for with the better than normal head articulation. Seriously, what is it about this thing that I actually like? Ah, it's the transformation. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is one of the all-time greats or anything. This is no Titan's Return Trigger Happy, which ironically has the same shoulder joints as this, but it's inventive. Not for a second did I ever wish I used the instructions. In fact, I pretty much figured this out in like one minute. It's creative. The way the chest works may actually be a first, and the shoulder pads forming a tidy back end like this is really smart. And it's super satisfying. The way the treading of his boots locks together to form the front bumper makes OCD man brain smile and release the happy chemical. The parts forming is slightly annoying, but thankfully not mandatory, and that section is another unique component that flips from the back to the front. Plus, you do have options for how to attach the guns in this mode, though I stick with the engine booster configuration personally, and the resulting space car mode is pretty sick. So, at the very least, I'm glad that there's something in this review that I can point to as uncomplicatedly good. Or just like, you know, good in general at all. I can't claim that the transformation and the alt mode make up for the sins of the robot mode, but they sure help. As Paul Giamatti once said in a movie that if you recognize that quote from, you are awesome. No, I did not just learn about that movie from Brandon Tennell, I watched it when it came out. This is a cool little cyberpunk car that would have honestly felt pretty at home in Siege, though it is a little softer on the lines than they were doing back then, and the surface sculpting has less greeble. Honestly, this kind of rips off Wheeljack's vibe a bit, with the car having more of a cockpit than a cab, and there's something very slick about the colors in the bumper section. But I think the coolest aspect of the alt mode is the recessed clear wheels. They carry something of a Tron vibe, and despite being blade thin and made of smooth plastic, this rolls pretty decently at least. And outside of the panel lines and the transition from the front of the cab to the other windows, this is really cohesive with basically no kibble. Though if you turn it upside down, it's clear he's mostly standing in a weird way. So it's an imperfect but solid and unique alt mode, even if it's stealing a bit of Wheeljack swag. However, I'm still at a loss for why I like this thing so much. Unlike my brother, I think Sunstreaker has always had a cool design, but I can't profess a particular fondness for the character that could override my better judgment. Like, I love Beast Wars Silverbolt, and that did not save his recent legacy figure for me. So it can't be a personal character bias that makes me enjoy this thing. And while the transformation is really good and the alt mode is decent too, I can't say this is one of those figures I transform whenever the opportunity presents itself like Titan's Return Trigger Happy, who, despite being like six or seven years older than this, is still clearly the superior figure. And that thing's a headmaster, so that's really tragic. Plus, the alt mode is also not one of those absolute winners. And even if they were, the articulation would still be a pretty hefty drag on the figure. And this is why I always say that subjectivity and objectivity are not enemies. One does not destroy the other. Because I like this thing, but if I'm honest and I'm objective, I don't think this is very good. It's an ugly figure with awkward proportions and absolutely heinous head and bad articulation that also happens to have a decent alt mode and a pretty good transformation. If I was grading this on a number scale, it would be at like a 4 when a 5 out of 10 is already below the halfway mark. But its quality doesn't have to matter to me or to you. I like this 4 out of 10 figure. Something it's doing is appealing to me personally personally, and I don't know what it is. Maybe you're an insane person like me, and there's something about this that you'll like too. But I don't think that can be relied upon. Should you get this thing? I don't think you probably should. Even if I like it, my guess is that it will still underwhelm you. This might be the first time that I thought a figure was objectively bad, but I still subjectively liked it. And you are never wrong for what you like or hate. But I could be wrong that it's bad. Because objective doesn't mean correct. It means objective. Anyways, let's thank a patron. And this time it's... I swear I don't pick these. Anthony Kane with Earthrise Optimus. You said this just to make me squirm, didn't you? In keeping with today's apparent theme, Earthrise Optimus is a figure that I don't like that I think is objectively good. It mostly looks the part, even if the legs are massively too long, and it feels like one of the most complete Optimuses we've gotten since G1 since it comes with a trailer, even if that thing is a monstrously overpriced $1 accessory. And the best part is the transformation, which is pretty cool with the way this chest just kind of flows out of itself to form the whole front. Even if I don't really like this thing, I understand why people do. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.